Good morning, I'm Adam Sexton. As far as statewide races go, it will top the ticket, and there's going to be a lot of national attention on the candidates for governor of New Hampshire in the months ahead, as Democrats see the corner office at the State House in Concord as a pickup opportunity in November. One of the Democratic candidates vying for that nomination is Executive Counselor Cindy Warmington. She's our guest in studio this morning. Counselor, thank you for being here. Pleasure to be here. So Democrats are very interested in ending this losing streak that they're on in terms of running for governor and not winning back that corner office. So. When people ask you, what's the difference between you and Joyce Craig and why should I choose you, what do you say? I say that I am the candidate who can take back the corner office in November. I have been a fighter on the executive council as the highest ranking Democrat in New Hampshire for the last four years fighting for all of the things that are important in our state right now. We have an attack on reproductive freedom, an assault on our public schools. We have young people who are unable to make ends meet, working people who can't make ends meet because of our housing crisis and the skyrocketing costs. We have real issues that we need to address in our state, and I have been the, the leading voice on these issues on the Executive Council for the past four years. I would also say that even the Republicans recognize that I am the most formidable candidate. When asked on the radio about it, the governor himself said Warmington would be formidable, and uh, the recent polling that we've done shows exactly that, that in when, uh, when voters are introduced to my messaging. They recognize that, that uh, those are the issues that are important in our state. That's what we need to do. And we need to make sure that Kelly Ayotte does not end up in the corner office. Kelly Ayotte is supported a national abortion ban. She helped to overturn Roe v. Wade. She celebrated the fall of Roe v. Wade. She supported legislation with restrictions for uh, in vitro fertilization. Kelly Ayotte is out of touch with New Hampshire, and we need to make sure that she does not end up in the corner office, and I'm the one to do it. As we noted earlier, this is going to be a nationally watched election, and it's possible that the president, Joe Biden, he was just here, he might come back again between September and November to try and help a Democrat nominee. I'm sure you would welcome that opportunity, but is there any Biden administration policy you disagree with? I am proud to stand with President Biden in this race. I think that we need to focus on the issues that are important. Our entire, entire democracy is at stake in this election. We cannot let Donald Trump anywhere near the White House, and I am really proud to stand with President Biden. So is there anything the Biden administration could be doing better right now? I think that we should support uh, the Biden administration's efforts to, as, as they have been, to improve on our economy, to invest as they have in New Hampshire, and I am really proud of the job that Joe Biden has done to help the Granite State. If you're elected, will you discontinue Governor Chris Sununu's Northern Border Alliance program, which of course increases the state law enforcement presence at the U.S.-Canadian border? I have been a strong supporter of uh, of strong borders. Uh, my entire time on the council, I have voted in favor of border security. Pr uh, Senator Shaheen and Senator Hassan really asked for additional information about this, came out saying that we do need additional personnel technology on the border, and I have supported that. And I think that we need to protect our borders, but at the same time, what we really need to be focused on is making sure that we adopt the border security security um, legislation, the bipartisan legislation that was brought before the legislature uh, that Republicans like Kelly Ayotte have blocked. And that what that means is that we have not, uh, we are not adopting the legislation that would actually protect us from fentanyl coming across the border, from human trafficking, and which would allow for more orderly immigration uh, policies in our country and al allow us here in New Hampshire to adopt uh, to address our workforce shortage, you know we have um, we have really have a workforce shortage across the spectrum with uh, healthcare workers, with farm farm workers, with seasonal workers, and we really need to address our immigration policies instead of using this like a political football. Well, you mentioned Senator Ayotte there. You know, some Democrats are now very quick in the immigration debate to level charges of racism and bigotry. The chairman of your party just a few days ago wrote a social media post saying Ayotte of course, one of your potential opponents, quote, fear, hate, racism. Do you believe Kelly Ayotte or her campaign has done anything in this campaign so far that is overtly racist? 
I, I have not been I have not seen anything like that but I will say that we need to be careful around the rhetoric on this issue to promote fear and hatred of any group of people is wrong that kind of discrimination increases um, the danger to our communities increases hate crimes we've seen that all across the country we've seen that in our state and we want to make sure that we have a, a comprehensive immigration reform that we have appropriate border security and that we do everything we can to make sure our communities are safe but we do not want to be promoting hatred racism we don't want to be dividing people in that way that is what uh, Trump has done uh, he has shown uh, that he leads uh, with hatred and division and that is not what we need in our state we do obviously continue to see a surge of migrants crossing the southern border if the federal government asks you to take in migrants here in New Hampshire as governor Will you welcome them? Well, I would say this, that the federal government isn't asking that question. Um, and I think what we need here is comprehensive immigration reform and appropriate border security. A uh, bipartisan bill that was before the Congress that Republicans have blocked um, because they want to use this issue as a political football. That is not what we need. Um, and I will also say that we have a very rich history uh, with immigration here in New Hampshire. You know, um, back uh, when our textile mills were the largest textile mills in the world, we had immigrants come from all over the world. So if these here. migrants needed to come here, would you welcome them? Well, of course, if we have an orderly border security bill, orderly immigration, we already. And so I not until then. The legislation would need to pass before you would say, I will allow some of these migrants to come to New Hampshire to settle. Well, it's really the... There's Especially because really, these people are seeking asylum, right? I mean, it's... There's really not an ask uh, for... Uh, what, has go what has been going on is Republicans have been targeting um, places for and, and you know creating some chaos around this issue. What we need is an orderly process and I have supported that as an executive counselor. We have refugee resettlement programs now in our state which I very much support and would support into the future of course. So under, gov under a Governor Warmington would this be a sanctuary state? Absolutely not. I think that is a local issue to be, side, to be decided by our local communities. I would not, we would not have a sanctuary state. <clears throat> we would also not um, tell or prohibit our cities and towns from making that decision for themselves. In this recent legislative session, we saw law enforcement come forward and speak out on this issue that this kind of a prohibition would actually make our communities less safe. It would impede them doing community policing. It would interfere with the trust relationships they've already been building in their communities for years. This is a local issue. And we need to tell Kelly Ayotte and the Republicans to stop this politic making this a political wedge issue stop putting politics over people and make sure that we adopt comprehensive immigration reform and the bipartisan security bill how will gun laws change if you're the governor as you know i have called for uh, common sense gun regulations that we should have universal background checks we should have a three-day waiting period we should have red flag rules we should have gun free zones for schools um, we should have a ban on ghost guns and i have called for the ban on assault weapons i do not believe weapons of war belong on our streets. Um, my opponent, um, Kelly Ayotte, actually voted against a gun, um, a universal background checks after Sandy Hook. Uh, I think that we need to really look hard uh, at what we are seeing here. I travel around the state and I have to tell you one of the most heartbreaking things that I hear is when parents of young children who are sending their kids off to school tell me they are afraid. They're afraid for their children to be in school. We need to address common sense gun regulations that most uh, uh, most everyone in New Hampshire already supports. Uh, this has nothing to do with recreational hunting uh, guns. This has to do with taking weapons of war off of our streets. The Democrats want tougher gun laws, but under the 2018 bail law that passed, there are people who are committing gun crimes, like reckless conduct, firing their weapon into neighborhoods. They're being arrested, and they're being let right back out under the streets, uh, potentially to terrorize the same people they were just, you know, trying to fire warning shots toward there. So, does that make sense to you to have this idea that people can just get out right after they do something like that, especially when it's gun crime, which you want to address? 
I, you have touched on the uh, issue of bail reform that is before the legislature now. We need to make a change in our bail law. We need to stop the revolving door, but at the same time, we need to respect people's constitutional rights. I am very supportive of what I am seeing in the legislature right now. The, there is a bipartisan effort to really make this change. I was disappointed that it was not made in the last session, and I'm hopeful that it will be made in this session, and that we need to really focus on making sure that we are keeping our streets safe. The attacks we're seeing on staff at Hampstead Hospital, these incidents, this is something you're tracking as a member of the Executive Council. Local first responders in Hampstead clearly assuming a very heavy burden for uh, small departments, fire and police there. Does what's happening now show that building the new YDC there is just too much for a small community like that to handle? No, I don't think so. I think that we need to really um, pay attention to the appropriate staffing uh, at that facility and work with our law enforcement, uh, both our state police and local law enforcement, and address these issues. But I think it's really important that we make sure that we do have a place to replace the YDC. We need to close that facility. All right, one last question here. Uh, marijuana legalization, what does that look like under Governor Warmington? Wide open or do you want some state controls? I think we're going to listen to what people have to say about that, but I am absolutely for the legalization of cannabis properly regulated and taxed, and we should um, be moving forward that, with that. If, if, if that doesn't happen in this session, then I certainly will make sure it happens in my term. But a robust private market, is that what we would see, do you think? I think that we need to have, I don't think that this would be done just through the, uh, to the liquor stores. I like the franchise model that I'm seeing, but we'll see, you know, the devil's in the details. Let's see how that plays out. All right, Councillor, thanks for joining us on Close Up, and we'll see you out there on the campaign trail. My pleasure.